Hi, we're back at Sync Summit, live from Hollywood. And we managed to catch up with the founder and CEO of The Honey Pot, John Anderson. John, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having it. me, Rich. All right. Tell us what Honey Pot is, because it's a unique company that does a lot of things in publishing and it in is. broadcasting. It definitely so is. Well, Honey Pot about. started out as a, as a, a party, you okay. know, a film and TV music mixer, you know, oh, about right. uh, 15, 17 years ago now. Uh, back when we, did, you know, music supervision or, or music placement didn't get as much love as it, or attention as it does now, you know, uh, we decided to like, you know, kind of create our own events, and uh, we started a party with, you know, no guest list, no cover charge, very easy, accessible, non-denominational sort of hang, you know, and uh, it became pretty popular. Uh, it sort of evolved into a live internet radio show that I right, do every right. other Monday night right. at a club here in Los Angeles called The Mint. And, uh, you know, we bring in industry professionals to sort of curate sort of 30-minute listening sessions, and we talk to them about the music, and a lot, oftentimes it's, you know, songs that, that, that brought them into the music industry in the first place. Or, you know, it's bands that are just, you know, so good, but usually people really necessarily haven't heard yet, you know. So there's a lot of great discovery around it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, uh, as every sort of time progressed, you know, we, you know, as a music publisher, sure. focusing on film and TV placement, we ba I basically took the, the sort of the business model and applied it to the, the party brand, as okay. they say. And uh, that is now Honeypot. So, so by day, we, we work with acts and writers and, uh, you know, do full-fledged publishing sort of scenario relationships with, and right. uh, and then really do what we can to to help them. Uh, you know, get in TV shows and get into movies, and you know, find a, a, a broader audience through through our placement and marketing efforts. Do you find that the as a publisher, because you you mentioned that that's you know what you're doing as well with Honeypot, that the I, I, how would I put this that the the realm of the music publisher today is more oriented and focused on film and TV placements rather than getting cuts or getting signed? Well, I think the most important thing that a publisher can pr provide is, you know, the solid administration, you know, the collection, right. you know, that, right. you know, that, if that's not there, then everything, you know, you do creatively won't matter, you know, anything sort of financially. So, okay. so a publisher has to have great, strong collection in place worldwide, and then uh, you, you, you will, you know, the added bonus to that publishing relationship is a great, strong creative department, you know, someone that, you know, someone that can either help pitch songs to mm -hmm. artists and get them placed, uh, that can help hook up collaborations for, you know, writer producers where they can right. co-write with artists and, you know, get on records that way, or the, the film and TV placement side where, you know, all right, here's, you know, w we look for, you know, for ways that we can, you know, provide marketing tools for, for you know, a, an act, an artist, you know, or, you know, and then also the, the, the monetary sort of, sure. you know, element that comes with that, you know, it's always nice to, to get paid, you know, to be able to pay the writers, you know, the creators of the, of the song, and uh, uh, that's always a, just a perfect validation point, you know, for everyone involved working on it, you know, I mean, all of a sudden, you know, hey, someone's using a song, and, you know, they're, they're actually, you know, you know, contributing, you know, to, to the cause of being in that band, or being right. that writer, you know, financially, and it opens it up to a completely new, oftentimes a new market and a new world and a new audience. And you know, it's just a great way to be able to, you know, focus your attention on. So, are are the collaborations that you spoke of in terms of creating those opportunities for writers and uh, and artists that you have on your uh, roster, are they more difficult to attain today than in years past, or do you find that there's more of a willingness to collaborate with people today than? Well, uh, you know, I think it's pr still pretty consistent, you know, okay. I mean, you know, if you look back days past, there were, you know, more, uh, you know, artists that, that you know, would cut outside songs, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you go back 40 years, 50 sure. years, you know, that was uh, pretty commonplace, you know, and then, you know, with acts like the Beatles where, you know, artists and bands were writing their own material and it was self-contained that, that, you know, Sort of opened it up into a different sort of sort of world for sure. publishers, where you know they didn't have to necessarily get those cuts, you know. Um, but now, you know, there's still artists that need songs. There's still records being made, you know, 
uh, production that's needed, so it's still very active. You know? Okay. So, In your experience, you've been a publisher for a long time, and I'm curious, what is it that you feel, in terms of your experience, has been the greatest challenge that, I guess, you face as a music publisher today versus when you started? Ah, oh, man, the greatest challenge. I mean, it's, it's you know, beginning the beginning area, it's always just, you know, getting the song heard, you okay. know. That's where it, where it starts, where you have to get the song recorded or, mm -hmm. you know, the band needs to get that record deal or finish that record and release it themselves, you know. So it starts with just getting the material finished, getting it released, you know. Uh, but after that, you know, I mean, oftentimes that's the beginning, you know. Right. You know, once you get it released, then you do have to go to work and, you know, find better distribution, you know, or, you know, you go to work breaking it, you know. So I, I feel like uh, you know the most satisfying moment, you know, comes from, you know, the payoff of the development. You know, right. I mean, everyone can can you know find an artist and champion a band, and you know, uh, but when once it kind of goes that full course where you know artists are now sort of getting recognized and. You know, you, you know, as a publisher, you know, I, I love taking myself out of the picture between, you know, a music supervisor or a songwriter artist, you know, connecting them directly together, you know, where, you know, bringing them to the show, you know, introducing them to the band where, you know, when they have a, a search that they're working on, you know, before they hit send, they can think, hey, I saw this great band a couple nights ago and they have a song that, that would be perfect for this, you know. I don't need to send out this search, you know, it's right. already, let's just use this, you know, and it's just, it's just done, so. And that comes with the relationships. It comes with the relationships, but it, those are the moments where I feel like, okay, you know, the baby's, you know, been, been birthed, and mm -hmm. they're growing up and kind of moving out of the house, and that's where, the, you know, I, for me, uh, when they move from the club into the arenas, you know, and, and, that, and that kind of time is where I feel like I can, you know, let it go, <laughs> you know, well, move on to the next one. Well, it's interesting you bring that up because, uh, you know, one of the things that I'm curious about, especially with somebody with your experience, is have you seen the publisher's role in the whole artist development process, which traditionally wasn't a publisher's role? Of course. Have you seen that increase over the last couple of years as record companies have oh, sort of diminished that? Yeah, it, it absolutely has. You okay. Know, I mean, development, you know, used to be done a lot more from the record label sort of standpoint, and now, yeah, the publishers are actually still... Active. You know, kicking up some, you know, some some initial seed money to uh, to cover some recording expenses. You know, I mean, if you find a, a great band, you know, I mean, I've, I've always, you know, I mean, if you're able to give an advance, you know, and I always sort of like ask to, you know, go to the band and really ask what they need, you know. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, you know, I mean, you know, uh, it's easier to justify an advance if they're saying, hey, they just want ten grand to kind of cover their bills, you know. Uh, where if they're coming out saying, hey, we need 10 grand, we're going to buy a van, and then we're going to go on the road, and, you know, so it's easier to maybe justify the, the advance based around yeah. what they're spending the money on. and uh, What you can get done for that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So anything that kind of furthers the project, I feel like, you know, is a great way to, you know, to get in early, and that's the development project. It's like, all right, you know, how do we move this, this, this van forward, you know, maybe it's a van. Talk about how you find acts today. I mean, there, you know, the, there's so much proliferation. I'm, I'm always saying that the greatest challenge we all face in music is just getting people's attention. Yeah. So the, 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 the question for you is, how do you find acts that are at a place that you want to work with them? Yeah. You know, where you feel, this is something that I want to put my time, effort, energy into. I have a, a pretty voracious appetite for music. I'm always looking, I'm always searching and, and finding stuff, you know, and, and part of it is the challenge that I put on myself with these radio shows, you know. Right. I mean, it, it forces me to, to come up with, you know, 45 minutes of music, you know, every two weeks, and, you know, I want to I want to be there early. I want to find stuff that's exciting that people are going to go, wow! I can't believe it. Uh, you know, I heard that from from you know John Anderson, the Honeypot Radio Show, and yeah. uh, you know, so it forces me to really listen and really be active in it. And I really feel that there is a ton of great music out there. You know, there's not a lot of quality filters out there that no. people can truly you know believe in. And it's overwhelming, as a result. So much music, exactly, exactly. You know, people um, don't know where to begin. A lot of times. It's everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere. You know, you can't help not hear music, you know, but, but to get down to what you really like, what your personal taste, what your real true personal tastes are, you know, where do you get that from? And, you know, a lot of it's just, just paying attention. If you're truly interested, you'll go out and see shows and, 
you know, you'll check your favorite blogs and you listen to the radio or whatever, you know, you, you'll find it, so. Do you welcome submissions to Honey Pot or to you in terms of people looking to get songs recorded or to, for a writer or for an artist, or are you more looking for artists or are you more looking for writers? We are very open to all different aspects, you okay. know. Uh, yeah, yeah, people sent me up music, you know, they, they send me music all the time, you know, I mean, with the show, we were booking acts for right. the show, so I always get, you know, record labels and publishers and bands saying, hey, we'd love to do, you know, play, play the party, and, you know, like I said, the parties are all free, so it makes it real easy for, for artists to bring out their fans and the industry. And, and you bring the industry out because it's a known entity. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, so okay. it's, you know, everyone sort of builds on on that, and you know, you get these great, great nights from it. You know, and we mix around the, the genre of the artist, so it's not you know, a one thing. Yeah, exactly. I love to go out and see a rock band, and then you know, hang out a little later, and there's a rapper on, or you know, and then you hang out later, there's a great DJ on, and it just kind of you know. It makes it sticky. <laughs> yeah, and it makes it more interesting for you in terms of yeah. the music that you can represent. That's right, exactly right. So you're open to that? I'm very open to that. You know, you can go to the Honeyfile website, all of my contact information's there, you know, send me an email, send me links, uh, you know, come on down. Okay. <laughs> John, thanks so much for doing this. I appreciate Rich, it. Rich, thanks for having me, man. Thank you. For sure. Okay, great. Thanks.